Why Christmas? Why Christmas? Because God is love. John 3.16 to 17, we've heard it so many times, says it all. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. We are loved. You are loved. Christmas is a love story. The story of God who loves you and I so much that God, the creator of all things, took on our form. A form that God created because of love. We cannot fathom our value or our potential. Today, when we think of potential, it's typically in terms of some type of success, some form of achievement, the ability to overcome diverse circumstances. And all of those things are good, yet they still fall short of the potential that you and I are called to, the potential from which we have fallen and we cannot attain without the saving hand of God. And that is our potential to love. Why Christmas? Because God is love. And God is showing us how desperately we are loved. Also a call to the life of Jesus Christ who grows up from this little baby and shows us the life of love that we are called to participate in. If religion does not call us to a place of love for one another, it's not of God. As 1 John 4, 8 says, whoever does not love does not know God because God is is love Hmm. and God came because of love Jesus lived a life of love he stepped over traditions he even overrode the religious law for the sake of love do you know Jesus was known as the tainted rabbi he ate and he drank with sinners none of those here tonight I'm sure He ate and drank with sinners. And you know, eating and drinking with people, that was synonymous with approving of their lifestyles. Did you know that? That's why the religious people had a hard time with who Jesus ate and drank with. Jesus also went into Samaria and Phoenicia, the Decapolis, even into the homes of some of those people. That was something that their religious laws forbid. Jesus embraced and allowed himself to be embraced by women. Wow, fancy that. He let them sit at his feet to be taught. Their culture wouldn't let others do that. He even let one wash and anoint his feet. How dare Jesus do and allow such things? This man could not be from God. What parts of our religion push people away? What attempts at purity hurt each other? Segregate us from others. You know, even the disciples, they felt uncomfortable at times. The freedom that Jesus exercised was inappropriate at times. But Jesus found faith in the most unlikely places, a Roman centurion, a Samaritan woman, a Phoenician woman. He found faith in adulterers and in a prostitute, even in a tax collector. I know, you can't believe that one, can you? (laughs) Jesus saw faith in places where others never thought possible. How? It was love. 
And Jesus shows us our greatest potential, that to which you and I are called. It's the same love. Jesus makes our mandate very clear, to love one another. He says in John 13, verses 34 to 35, Jesus says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I've loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know you are my disciples, if you love one another. Those disciples, they were going into all the world, and Jesus had to prepare them. They were not to take their laws and their rules, their standards of living, which the Jewish culture was already highly respected for among the nations. No, they were to take a new standard, which was love. You know, all those awkward moments with Jesus, all those traditions and the law-breaking moments, they all had a purpose. Jesus was showing them what love looks like. And their mission was to reveal God to the nations and lead humanity back into a connection with God. And it was not to look like a ritual or a moral standard or rules, but love. That's how the world should know that we are disciples of Jesus, by our love for one another. John reminds the early Christians of our mandate from which Jesus writes. And in his letter of 1 John, he says this, This is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. We need to ask ourselves, what is our attitude towards each other? What is our attitude towards those who disagree with us? Towards those whose lifestyles we don't approve of? Remember that even the disciples were uncomfortable at times with whom Jesus embraced. Why would Jesus do such a thing? Because of love. Love has no limits. It finds faith in the most unexpected places. The Apostle Paul, he recognized the powerful love of Jesus. Having been one so zealous to live a morally pure and godly life, Paul realized that all of that effort meant nothing. The true calling on our lives is to love one another. And as the early church was struggling to express their newfound experience in faith, Paul writes his letters to give direction and to keep them on track. Paul understands the message and the mission of Jesus and so writes in one of his letters in Galatians. He says, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. That's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that wonderful? If you're ever confused about the Bible or Christianity, just, you just that's it right there. Just pull out Galatians 5, 6. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself in love. Hmm. How many things do we tend to insist on? Does our faith divide or does it bring together? If it is true trust in God, it will express itself as love. Paul also writes a letter to help the church at Rome to sort out their expression of their new faith. As many of you will recall, we've done a few series on Romans, right? You remember that it was the Christian Jews and the Christian Gentiles, they were at odds with each other on how their mutual faith should be lived practically on a day-to-day -day basis. So Paul makes it very clear when he says in Romans 13, 8, whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Yeah, simple, isn't it? <laughs> it's great. Whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. How are we fulfilling the law? By trying to follow it or by loving one another? 
Christmas is this most powerful reminder of God's love for us. And as God walks among us, God shows us what a life of love looks like. And as we look at Jesus and place our faith in him, may God's love flow through our lives, truly making us like Christ. Why Christmas? To call us back to love, to discover the love God has for us, to discover our God-like potential, which is found as faith expressing itself through love. Merry Christmas. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we celebrate this moment. We remember it is for love that you came. And as we sing of the Christmas carols and remind ourselves of the stories, may your love rise in our hearts. May it melt our fears. And may it bring us together to be a true light for you in our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.